In our last spectroscopy module, you learned how proton NMR can be used to help elucidate the structures of molecules, specifically by analyzing the number of peaks in the spectrum, the chemical shifts of those peaks, and the integrations of those peaks. There's one more phenomenon in proton NMR spectroscopy that can be useful. It's called spin-spin coupling, or just coupling. Let's take a look at bromoethane. Based on what we know so far, we could probably predict that it has two peaks in the NMR spectrum. One peak for the three hydrogens here. They would have a fairly low chemical shift within the sp3 range, and would be somewhat larger than the peak for these hydrogens, which would show up with a slightly higher chemical shift because they're closer to the bromine. Here is the real spectrum. We were right about everything, but these peaks look strange. They're really clusters of lines rather than single peaks. They're called multiplets. They arise from the fact that each of these protons is acting like a little spinning charge. Remember that electrons, which are also little spinning charges, create tiny little magnetic fields when they're, when they're placed in an applied magnetic field. That's why nuclei at different locations within a molecule have different chemical shifts. Protons are also little spinning charges, and they can affect the, near, the nuclei that are near them, their neighbors. Let's look at a simplified system of two neighboring protons, the observed proton and its neighbor. Just based on its location and electronic environment within the molecule, H observed would, would absorb some particular frequency of photon. That is, it would have some chemical shift, delta. The neighbor can have two possible spin states, either spin up, we'll call it plus, or spin down, minus. And these two possibilities each influence the observed proton's absorption frequency in equal and opposite ways. So in a sample of this molecule, about 50% of the observed protons will have a neighbor that's spin up and absorb slightly higher frequency photons, while the other 50% will have a neighbor that's spin down and they'll absorb slightly lower frequency photons. We end up with a pair of peaks called a doublet. What if the observed proton has two identical neighbors? Each of those neighbors could have two possible spin states. The first neighbor can be either spin up or spin down, and the second neighbor could also be spin up or spin down. The possible combinations are plus plus, plus minus, minus plus, and minus minus. We end up with a set of three peaks in a one to two to one ratio called a triplet. What about three neighbors? They can have the following combinations of spin states. All three plus, two pluses and a minus, two minuses and a plus, and all three minuses. This gives a total of four peaks in a one to three to three to one ratio. We call it a quartet. To generalize, a particular observed proton gives a multiplet with n plus 1 peaks, where n is the number of neighboring protons. A pr so a proton with zero neighbors gives a single peak, a singlet. One neighbor leads to a doublet, two neighbors leads to a triplet, and three neighbors to a quartet. Four neighbors gives a pentet, five peaks in a 1 to 4 to 6 to 4 to 1 ratio. Five neighbors gives a sextet in a 1 to 5 to 10 to 10 to 5 to 1 ratio. And six neighbors gives a septet with a complex ratio. These multiplicities can help you determine the structure of a molecule from a spectrum. The number of peaks in a multiplet gives you an idea of how many neighbors that proton or group of protons has. I should point out that identical, equivalent protons 
don't couple with each other.